Welcome to this Eurotrip 2021 presentation on one-way functions and malleability oracles, which is a talk about hidden shift attacks on isogeny-based protocols. This was joint work together with Peter Kutash, Christophe Petit, and Charlotte Weitkamper. In our work, we show that for overstretched and unbalanced parameters, a quantum sub-exponential attack on SIDH exists. I'll get back to what this means in a couple of minutes. The attack uses a reduction to an injective abelian hidden shift problem. For C-side and isogeny-based protocols based on ordinary curves, it is known how to solve the underlying problems in quantum sub-exponential time via such a reduction by the results of Charles Zhao and Sukarev. Yet, a commonly widespread belief was that the algorithm of Charles et al. does not apply to SIDH. The argument was that the algorithm relies crucially on an abelian group action and therefore no variant of it uh, would apply in the SIDH setting. Our work shows that for specific parameter choices, this widespread belief is false. However, let me add a disclaimer right here. The attack does not apply for balanced SIDH parameters as they were originally suggested by Zhao and DeFeo, nor does it apply to psych which is the isogeny-based submission to the NIST standardization process. Instead, the value of the paper consists in showing that a completely different attack vector exists for inadequate parameter choices. Let's start with a quick recap what isogenies are. Let E0 and E1 be elliptic curves defined over a field K. In cryptography, we are usually interested in those curves being defined over a finite field. An isogeny is a non-constant rational map between two curves that fixes the identity, or equivalently is also a group homomorphism. Recall that elliptic curves have a group structure on them, so this in particular implies that the kernel of an isogeny is a subgroup of E0. However, the other direction is also true. Every finite subgroup of E0 defines an isogeny. Indeed, we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between finite subgroups of E0 and separable isogenies, which is the kind of isogeny I will be mostly talking about in the following. For these isogenies, the degree of the isogeny, which is the degree of the map when written as a rational map, equals the cardinality of the kernel. This kernel of an isogeny determines the image curve up to isomorphism which is why it makes sense to write the image curve as the quotient of the starting curve and the kernel up to isomorphism, and elliptic curves that are isomorphic share the same J-invariant, which uh, is an invariant that can be efficiently computed. Since for every isogeny there exists a dual isogeny in the opposite direction of the same degree, this gives rise to an undirected L-isogeny graph, where the vertices are J-invariants of elliptic curves and two vertices have an edge in between them if and only if there exists an isogeny of degree L between those curves. Isogeny-based cryptography is one of the candidates for post-quantum cryptography. The core problem of the area is to find large degree isogenies between supersingular elliptic curves. If you consider the previously mentioned isogeny graph, this could be interpreted as a pathfinding problem where you're given two vertices and in the graph, and you have to find a path connecting them. Most isogeny-based crypto systems, most famously SIDH, are based on variants of this problem or slight relaxations of this problem, in the sense that some additional information is provided that might or might not help to solve the pathfinding problem. One advantage of isogeny-based cryptography, besides being based on really beautiful maths, is that the key sizes are much smaller compared to crypto systems of other post-quantum candidates. The most prominent key exchange in isogeny-based cryptography is the supersingular isogeny Diffie-Hellman scheme, which was introduced by Zhao and DeFeo in 2011. It proceeds as follows. Let n1 and n2 be smooth coprime integers. Usually they are chosen to be a power of 2 and a power of 3, respectively and let p be a prime of the form n1 times n2 minus 1. Furthermore, you fix a curve e0 defined over fp squared. And two bases of uh, e0, namely of the n1 and the n2 torsion. 
Alice then picks an order n1 subgroup of E0 as her secret isogeny by choosing its generator, and similarly, Bob chooses an order n2 subgroup of E0. Both compute the isogeny corresponding to their secret subgroup and send each other the curve they arrive at, say, Ea and Eb. And further, Alice sends the image of the n2 torsion basis to Bob, and Bob sends the images of the n1 torsion basis to Alice. Using this torsion point information, both Alice and Bob can translate their secret isogeny onto the curve EB and EA, respectively, which, after one more isogeny computation, allows them both to compute the curve EAB up to isomorphism. Essentially, this works because we're quotienting out two subgroups that only trivially intersect. And then the order we do this in does not matter. Since both Alice and Bob arrive at an isomorphic curve, the J invariant is used as a shared secret. It is easy to see that recovering the isogeny, say phi A, would allow to attack the key exchange. Given E0 and EA, this would be an instance of the pure isogeny problem. However, we are also given additional torsion point information. In our work, we were looking whether this additional torsion point information makes it possible to reduce the problem of pathfinding or equivalently of recovering an isogeny in this diagram to an instance of the abelian hidden shift problem. The hidden shift problem is the following. F0 and F1 uh, are functions from the same group G to some codomain X, such that there exists some group element S in G that F0 evaluated at any group element equals F1 evaluated at that same group element times s, in multiplicative notation at least. The problem is to find the shift s given oracular access to both functions f0 and f1. If g is abelian and f0 and f1 are injective, this can be solved in quantum sub-exponential time with respect to the size of the group g using a quantum computer. This is some result due to Cooperberg. Um, let's look how something like this might look uh, roughly for SIDH. Uh, from now on, let's assume we want to recover the secret isogeny of Alice, uh, which is of degree n1, say a power of 2. Then the two isogeny graph starting at E0 looks like this. While we don't know Alice's secret isogeny, we do know its degree. So we do not know the path, but that Ea lies at a certain distance from E0. Assume we have a group action that acts transitively on the possible kernel subgroups defining paths to curves at distance n1 from E0. That is all the curves on the outer circle here. And let's assume that it's efficiently computable given a curve and the torsion point information that one has in SIDH. Then, if you take any other path of correct length from a starting curve to a curve, say, E A prime, then by transitivity of the group action, there exists one element in the acting group that maps E A prime to E A. The idea behind our paper is that this element is a shift and can be recovered using a hidden shift algorithm, if some further conditions are satisfied. Knowing this shift, we can apply it to the kernel of the isogeny from E0 to E A prime that we know because we picked it, and this will give us the kernel of the isogeny from E0 to E A, so the, the secret of Alice. Let's make this idea more general and let's consider what we actually need to compute uh, to compute a pre-image of an injective one-way function via a reduction to the injective abelian hidden shift problem. Um, let f from some domain i to a codomain o be an injective one-way function and let g be a group acting on the domain. We call a malleability oracle for g at an image point of f, say f of i, an oracle that provides f of g times i for any element g in the acting group g. Or put differently, the malleability oracle evaluates the function that on an input g of the group evaluates f of g times i. 
in some sense, this is a group action oracle, but it might be possible that more generally there are schemes where one could redefine a malleability oracle as some knowledge relating certain inputs and outputs. Now, the idea behind finding a pre-image of f of i by a reduction to the hidden shift computation is fairly straightforward if we make a couple more assumptions on the acting group G. Let the group G act transitively on the domain of the injective one-way function i and assume we have a malleability oracle for G at f of i, where i is the pre-image we want to compute. Then, if we pick any j in that domain, we know by transitivity that there exists an element sigma such that i equals sigma times j. Define two functions, f0 and f1, that map the group elements of g to the outputs of the one-way function evaluated at that group element times j and group element times i, respectively. g times j can be evaluated using the knowledge of j and the knowledge of how to evaluate the one-way function in the easy direction. And f of j times i can be computed using the malleability oracle. These two functions are hidden shifts of one another. And using a hidden shift algorithm, this shift can be computed in quant quantum sub-exponential time, at least if we further assume that f is injective and g is a finitely generated abelian group acting freely on the domain i. This is uh, to ensure that the solution is unique and that it can be computed with a sub-exponential quantum algorithm. Having computed a sigma, like the shift, of both functions, we can then compute i simply by computing the action of sigma on j. Let's get back to SIDH. For a fixed uh, starting curve in SIDH, uh, this is typically typically the curve uh, with j invariant 1728, or one of the close neighbors. Um, and let uh, n1 and n2 be security parameters of Alice and Bob, uh, as before. Then the one-way function underlying Alice's secret isogeny is the map sending n1 order subgroups of a e0 to a curve at distance n1 from e0, and the image of the basis of the n2 torsion. Note that this function can be efficiently evaluated using Volus formula, but computing pre-images is the hard problem underlying SIDH. In our work, we show that we can give a malleability oracle for this one-way function under certain conditions. More precisely, let G be a multiplicative subgroup of the endomorphism ring of E0 modulo N1, where each equivalence class contains an endomorphism of degree co-prime to the degree of Alice's secret isogeny, phi. Then a malleability oracle for this group G at EA, uh, which is uh, the, the starting curve E0 divided out by Alice's secret K, should provide the curve E0 divided out by theta of K, where theta is the endomorphism. By the copromality of the degrees of theta and phi, we have the following commutative diagram. And you can see that E0 divided out by theta of the kernel of phi is isomorphic to EA divided out by phi of the kernel of theta. Since we do not know the kernel of phi, we cannot compute the action of theta on it. However, the idea in our paper is to lift the endomorphism theta to an endomorphism theta prime that has the same action on the domain i of our one-way function, but is of degree n2, or dividing n2. For such a theta prime, for which we know the kernel, and for which we know that it's kernelized in the n2 torsion of E0, we can then evaluate phi of the kernel of theta prime. This is because the torsion information in SIDH of the n2 torsion points allows to compute the images of all points of order n2, in particular, if the kernel of the theta prime is in the n2 torsion, we can evaluate phi on it. But then, given Ea and phi of the kernel of theta prime, allows to evaluate the bottom right corner of the commutative diagram, which is the same as evaluating the malleability oracle. Apart from this uh, malleability oracle for SIDH, to use the general reduction to the hidden shift problem outlined earlier, there's some more tasks that had to be solved. 
first we had to partition the domain of the one-way function so the kernel subgroups of Alice uh, well that, that could Alice could potentially pick into large partitions such that SIDH one-way function uh, that the SIDH one-way function is injective on each of those partitions we did this by explicitly writing down three partitions for each partition we then find an abelian subgroup of the endomorphism ring containing endomorphisms of degree co-prime to n1 that act freely and transitively on each partition. And finally, we give an algorithm to lift elements from these acting groups, say g, to endomorphisms of norm n2. Uh, this is uh, in order for us to have a malleability oracle as described on the previous slide. While we give such solutions for the first two tasks in general, the lifting algorithm we provide works only if we allow SADH parameters where N2, so Bob security parameter, is larger than P and significantly larger than N1. Uh, this is what we call overstretched and unbalanced. More precisely, we choose the group acting on Alice's secret key space such that each element can be represented as an endomorphism of the form Frobenius endomorphism times zi, where i is the non-trivial automorphism of E0. The task, therefore, reduces to lifting endomorphisms of this form to norm N2. We solve this by solving a norm equation similar to the one at the core of the KLPT algorithm, where uh, KLPT stands for Cole, Lauter, PT, and T norm. Unfortunately, well, or fortunately, this algorithm works only for N2 greater P times N1 to the fourth, and under some heuristics also for n2 greater than p n1 to the n1 cubed. However, the way we solve the lifting, we would not expect solutions if n2 is less or equal p n1 squared. This is also the reason why the attack does not in its current form apply to balanced SIDH parameters or such. With some more formal background, let's take one more look at the two isogeny graph containing Alice's blue secret path. In our paper, we put the end nodes of the different paths into three different partitions. On each partition, we have an abelian free and transitive group action of endomorphisms modulo n1. Now, by picking any path that lies in the same partition as Alice's secret, we get to the curve EA prime, which can be mapped by the group action to EA. This follow, follows by transitivity and basically by having three partitions, there are three choices uh, for such a J. We define two functions, one that sends elements of the acting group of the curve you get when applying the group action on the isogenies leading to EA prime. The other one when applying the group action to the isogeny leading to EA. The first function we can evaluate because we know the pink path and we can just compute the endomorphism on its kernel. Um, this gives us another isogeny of the same length that we can then just evaluate. The second function, the one that computes the group action on EA, we can evaluate using the malleability oracle. Essentially, giving, given an endomorphism of E0, we find another endomorphism of E0 that has the same action on the N1 torsion. Uh, but it's of degree n2. Uh, we use the torsion point information provided by Alice on EA and compute uh, the curve at distance n1 from E0 that one would get when applying this endomorphism to the kernel of the secret isogeny. Both of the functions uh, we define are injective, they are shifts of one another, and the acting group is abelian. Using a hidden shift algorithm like Cooperbergs, we then find the shift corresponding to the red arrow in the picture, and this allows to compute the kernel of the secret blue isogeny from the known pink isogeny. Let me summarize the key contributions of the paper. It provides a new attack vector in SIDH-like protocols via a reduction to the abelian hidden shift problem, but the attack only works for unbalanced and overstretched SIDH parameters. Yet, the results show that despite SIDH's non-commutative nature, there's an abelian group action on its key space that can be used for this kind of attack. As opposed to previous hand-wavy arguments why such an attack should not exist, 
we give some bounds for when we expect the attack to actually work. We describe which algebraic properties are necessary for the attack in general terms, and this captures some previous attacks, such as the one of Charles, Zhao, and Zukarev. And we hope that the uh, general framework might be of interest for, uh, for future cryptanalysis in other areas. The isogeny based submission to NIST, PSYCH, and uh, balanced SIDH parameters are not threatened by this attack. Indeed, parameters for which this new attack applies were already known to be insecure by the results of Deken and others that was published this year at Crypto. If you have any questions, please ask in the Eurocrypt Q&A or send us an email. Thanks.